The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. So, hi everybody. Um, I'm, yeah, great. I hope, yeah, thanks for coming by and I uh, appreciate you guys coming after lunch. I know this is probably like uh, the, the sleepiest spot in the, uh, in the talking schedule. But um, yeah, my name is Kevin Chen. I'm co-founder of italki.com. Um, how many people know italki here? Everybody, almost? Okay. So for some of you who don't, um, I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. Uh, what we do at italki is we help connect students and teachers around the world for language lessons. So if you're interested in learning, let's say, Korean, you could get on our website and find a Korean teacher to teach you online uh, with one-on-one -on -one lessons through Skype. Um, yeah, we have, as you can see on the sign, <laughs> 3,000, more than 3,000 teachers. Uh, we teach over 50 languages. And um, yeah, thousands of language lessons are happening every day. So um, yeah, so if you haven't seen this website before, please check it out. Um, and yeah, please give us feedback. Um, what I thought I'd talk about today is, uh, you know, just again, just to give a little bit of background about us in case you were curious to know a little bit more about the company. And uh, I think just to also talk a little bit about what we think is changing in the uh, language education space. Um, and then just to simply open it up for questions. Um, and yeah, just as a quick note, um, we've had a great time here at the Polyglot Gathering. We're really, really proud to be a sponsor of this uh, amazing event. And for all the talks that I've seen so far and the people I've met, all of you guys are amazingly inspiring. And um, you know, it, it's, we're, just really, we're just really glad to be here. About me, uh, just in case you were curious, um, I'm American, I'm in my late 30s, and I am unfortunately not anywhere as gifted as all of you. I only speak um, English and, uh, and Mandarin Chinese, which I've studied in China. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my experiences learning a language. Um, I started italki with a, uh, a Chinese national guy named uh, Jiang Yongyue. We started the company in 2007 with a, a pretty basic idea. Uh, we just wanted to help people learn a language um, through other people. And it comes partly from our experiences learning a language um, on our own. And I don't know if you guys uh, can see this picture, but um, this is how I ended up learning French in high school. Um, I'm not sure if many of you have a similar experience. You're sitting in a classroom with 20 other kids. Um, you know, there's a teacher who's lecturing you, and I distinctly remember sitting in the back of the room wondering, you know, like, is the chair masculine or feminine? And, you know, <laughs> what is the subjunctive? And so on. And, um, and and the truth was, after uh, three years of this, uh, I came out not being able to have a basic conversation in French. And, um, and that's really a shame. I think, uh, that being said, I think that that experience is pretty universal. I mean, I know all of you are much more uh, talented and motivated, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, just to give you a sense of you know, how, how it looks in the world, um, you know, in China, for example, the classroom sizes are larger. Um, you're lucky if you have a native-speaking teacher, honestly. In contrast, I learned, when I studied Chinese for the second time in China, um, the first thing I did was I enrolled myself in classes again. Um, this was at Shanghai Jiao Tong Da Shui, uh, Jiao Tong University. Um, but I have to say that as an adult, uh, I approached language learning quite differently. And I think that all of you can imagine, um, you know, I wasn't just doing what my teachers told me to do. I sat down and I thought about all the things that, you know, could help me out there. And I'm sure many of you have seen um, these other tools. You know, some, many of you use Anki flashcards. Um, I was using the Plico Dictionary, which is also really amazing. Um, I had podcasts, like Chinese Pod. Um, there were a lot of really um, cool things that were coming out. And of course, the fact that I was in China really gave me this opportunity to make friends. It gave me this opportunity to have language partners, as well as a personal language tutor. So the second time around, um, I was able to make much, more, you know, much quicker progress, obviously, with, uh, you know, with a lot more help. And, um, and what we were trying to do at italki was to reflect some of this, uh, you know, what was possible here. If you're learning Chinese now, wherever you are, I'm sure you can get, you know, the Plico Dictionary and, and you can download podcasts. But what we thought was missing from language education was really this human piece. It was the fact that, you know, I had friends and, you know, it wasn't easy for me to make friends being, you know, where I grew up in the States. And, um, you know, and uh, yeah, language partners as well as language tutors. Um, so that's basically where we went with italki. Uh, we thought that you know, if we could find a place to connect people, especially with you know, new technologies like voice over IP and Skype and video chats, this is what we would, you know, we would be able to provide a great service to help people uh, learn a language. So you know, really simply, that's, that's kind of how we got our idea and how we got started. In terms of you know, what we think is changing um, in terms of you know, the language education space, you know, one thing I think that is uh, really interesting about this conference, and it's um, you know, and something that I think not necessarily everybody out there understands, is that uh, you know, there's this, all this talk about education revolution, and there's this big focus on technology as the big driver for this. I'm sure you've heard about Coursera and edX and all these, you know, MOOCs and all this new technology that's helping um, people learn. 
But I think there's another side of it which is much more philosophically driven. And it's a move away from this old uh, model of education, which for you know, lack of a better term, I'm just going to call the industrial model. Um, you know, you guys remember you know, the traditional education. It's very school-centric. It's very teacher-centric. Um, I think this really replicates my, you know, most of our experiences in high school and so on. Um, you know, it's the teacher tells you what to do. It's very standardized, right? You know, you have a one, two, three step of how to do things. You know, you're trying to, the values aren't necessarily wrong, but it's just optimized for a different universe. You know, they're trying to maximize teacher resources. They're trying to maximize, you know, the, uh, you know, their rent and their school. And, you know, they're just focused on, you know, uh, making sure that every student is okay and that you have outcomes like, you know, you're, you're taking test scores and trying to make sure that everyone is uh, proving that they're a good student to get to the next level, whichever that may be, a good university, you know, or a high TOEFL score or whatever it is. Um, and this is, I think, in big contrast with what I think is like the new, you know, the new world, right? Um, it's student-centric education. And, uh, you know, and there's a shift in responsibility away from teachers and schools to students. Um, I think it's always been this way in the end, right? I mean, the only way you're going to learn a language is still ultimately up to you. Um, and that goes not just for languages, but for everything. But I think that this, this new focus, this, um, this look at people learning, it, you know, people are using technology, but, you know, they're, they're thinking about it, you know, like, what is it for me, right? And it's not that these other things in the past weren't true, but it's just that we're, we're looking at a different set of values. Things like, you know, like, what motivates you to learn a language, you know, and understanding that, you know, it's going to be different for different people, right? You know, like, you might be an auditory learner, you might be a visual learner, um, you know, you might be interested in sports and you want to learn about, you know, uh, your content to reflect that as opposed to someone else who might be interested in board games or whatever. When I think about this, this new, you know, way of education and, you know, just trying to get, you know, languages or any, any subject to really resonate with the person themselves, you know, I think of this conference, really. You know, I think of everyone here, and, you know, when I hear people talking about, like, why are you learning, you know, Swahili, or why are you learning, you know, Cornish, it's like, you just love it. You know, it, it, it's, it's not because of there's a test or, like, there's going to be a job at the end of this or what have you. I think that really, uh, you know, when I look at all of you here, it's, it's you're here because you, you know, it, it really means something to you. Um, and, and that's what I was just going to note. It's just, you know, uh, language hackers and polyglots, you know, you're, you're passionate about it. You, know, you have this desire to communicate with people around the world and connect with people. Um, ultimately, your reasons for doing this are internal, right? It's not something that is imposed on you from outside. I think that you guys really, you know, uh, reflect, I guess, the spirit of what new education is all about. You know, whether that is sharing your knowledge and your experiences, um, you know, finding your own way. Um, you know, you're, you're the author of your own, um, you know, education destiny. If people ask me about what the future of language education looks like. You know, they're often talking about technology and blah, blah, blah. But I feel like it's really you guys are the future of language education. And that, that's why we're here. Uh, you know, I mean, we're very happy to support the event. And it's probably because we're trying to learn from you. Um, I'm happy to make this as a Q&A for you to ask more about italki. But really, I feel like my Q&A is for, you know, what you guys think is the right way to learn a language. And what can, you know, these new services do to support all of you. So, so. Thanks. Um, that's basically all I have to, <laughs> to, to present. Um, you know, and again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, nothing that's too confidential, but um, aside from that, whatever we can uh, tell you about us. Great. So. This is probably very, very basic about uh, italki, but um, you, you, you do it to connect uh, teachers with students, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you also do it for chat partners and stuff like this? We do. Um, so it's a very interesting question for us. We started off by helping people uh, connect up through language exchange. Um, that was our very first feature when we launched in 2007. It was a while ago. Um, and we, we think that language partners is a really important aspect of language learning, right? Being able to get practice and so on. And of course, it's free, so it's, it's cool. Um, but we found, that, uh, the, we found that the teacher relationship is much more consistent, I would say. Um, and you know, language partners are great. Uh, I've had many of them in my past, but I don't feel like you can get everything you need from just a language partner. Not all language partners, let's say, are created equal. You know, your language partner ultimately is doing this out of the kindness of their you know, heart. You know, it's a bit of a trade, but you can't sit there and be like, look, I need you to grind out my pronunciation problems and go over this with me you know, for half an hour straight. It's very hard it's, to find someone also that is like, it's a little bit like dating, honestly, <laughs> to find someone who has the same goals as you in the same level. Um, I think the hardest part about that is that we found that since we are a very global website, we found that people from different countries have very different experiences. And if you are an English native speaker, you have a wealth of options, right? You can get on the site and be like, you know, who wants to help me learn Chinese? And you're going to have a ton of Chinese people come and chase you around. Um, but if you're Chinese and you get on the site and say, who wants to help me learn English? It's like, 
crickets, right? Um, so there's, it's very, it's very hard. And I think for people who are trying to do the language chat challenge, uh, I think it's great. Um, you know, and a lot of companies are in this space. Um, for us, what we found is more valuable is uh, focusing on the teachers and the students. It's an experience that I think is, um, you know, it's, how would I say, you're more likely to get what you need out of that. And again, you can always change teachers. You can always find a teacher that reflects your interests more. Or, um, and as many people do, actually, they take multiple teachers at the same time to get different voices and so on. But, um, but yeah, it kind of helps solve that issue of oversupply in people and, um, and just the inconsistency of it. You'll waste, not waste, you'll spend a lot of time trying to find the right partner for you. And, and that can be, again, you know, for some people who are very dedicated, that can be a great experience. For some people who just try it a couple times and they feel like, wow, you know, I set up three language exchanges and no one was consistent enough to stay with me for more than a week. You know, that can be a bad experience. Uh, my question is, uh, so far, uh, what I've seen on italki is mostly the chance uh, to find uh, teachers, uh, to find uh, language exchange partners. And I noticed that you also branched out a bit into the territory of uh, Lang8 in offering uh, text that can be corrected mm -hmm. uh, by partners. I was wondering if you would uh, reveal a few of your uh, future plans for other um, features that we might have, uh, might see on, see on the site. Or well maybe ideas that you have for features uh, if you want to get some feedback from the people here. Uh, Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, it's interesting how we ended up developing a lot of our features. Um, you could say that we were pretty clueless, and we tried a lot of things, some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't. We first started off with a language exchange. We ended up also then building our answers feature, which is kind of a Yahoo Answers Q&A style for languages, language lessons. And then we did um, language questions. And then we did do a, uh, a feature around notebook corrections. So um, I believe we weren't very far from Lang8 at the time we launched it. It's nothing, uh, it's nothing recent. It's been a feature on the site been for a long time. Um, and again, like your mileage will vary. So uh, you can get amazing corrections if you write it in Chinese, if you're writing in English. You know, it, it, can, it can depend. Um, but uh, let's see here. Some other features that we built at some point were uh, like a wiki, like a, a wiki for uh, language textbooks. Um, that's something that we did retire. Um, and we tried a couple of ideas with resources as well. I think the direction that we're trying to move in is, um, you know, it's a, there's one of the big questions that we've seen from a lot of our students and from our teachers, and they told us that um, a lot of people take lessons with us, but they don't know how to learn a language. Um, you know, you can learn a language from somebody, but you won't necessarily know how to structure their entire lesson plan. And so this is something, this piece, um, I'm not sure for a better term to call it language coaching or language guidance, you know, I think it's something that um, a lot of people feel. In this world where you know the responsibility of learning a language is devolved back to the student, I think that there's you know there's kind of a gap in the market right now, which I think a lot of these you know the famous polyglots are filling. You know they're teaching you how to learn, not just you know not teaching you Chinese, they're teaching you how to approach learning Chinese. So this is something that we're interested in and about you know um, giving people a framework, helping people to assess their progress, helping people to track their efforts, and um, and again a lot of features about how to um, how to smooth that relationship between your teachers and the students and to essentially build up your own personalized language textbook and so on. So these are some of the ideas that we have. But again, please tell me if you think that's a terrible idea or not. Uh, you know, it'll save us a lot of time and heartbreak. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm one of the few that uh, hasn't uh, too much experience with Italki, um, but uh, can you maybe just briefly explain how it works? So I, I, I want to learn a language and then I go and uh, look for a teacher and I, I contact him and book him uh, and book a time slot and then I pay it or what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's basically that I would say the only complication to that is that we do use a virtual currency in our system. So you purchase our virtual currency um, and then all of the transactions on the website take place using italki credits. Um, okay. So that's basically it. You, you basically said it. Um, the teachers list their own, you know, they choose their own prices, they, they, they list their own schedules, and you can, um, yeah, you can just book a time slot with them and, and take lessons there. And uh, if, if I don't uh, know any of them, is there um, like a choice, like mm, that one teacher offers this method and another one, another one? So we usually, so for this one, we usually try to say take a trial lesson with a teacher, um, you know, just to get to know them. You can also write to the teacher to, to understand how they approach language teaching. We always tell people to try and uh, provide as much information about your goals and how you prefer to learn so, um, so the teacher has more information to help you with. I think that first lesson is really critical and that's the one where you can get a sense of you know, how they teach and how you want to learn. Okay. So it's one by one? It's one on one, yes. Thank you. Sure. Uh, would you, we were accepting the future on italki uh, articles about not that uh, 
mm, not that popular languages because I see at that you at the moment accept only articles for the mainstream languages like English, German, Italian, Spanish. Yes. Will this uh, change in the future? Yes, we would love to get more languages on there. I think our, uh, for Italki articles, um, we have teachers um, and other people who are writing um, essays about um, you know, interesting language topics, which we put on the website, and we also send out to people who are interested in learning a language. So if you're interested in learning German, you can get a newsletter, essentially, with some tips for um, how to learn German. Um, the other languages we're very excited about, we just need to get enough articles um, so that it's not like we send out two articles and then it stops. So it's just a matter of getting enough uh, so, uh, articles. So, for instance, it's a matter of not getting only one, but uh, how many articles do you need to get in order to put the... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're saying something probably... It depends if it's a pipeline, right? If you're going to write an Esperanto article for us every week, then we would be ecstatic, um, and that would be, that would be great. We would, we would start sending that right away. Um, we just don't want to have a situation where we send it and then it stops. So, we, yeah, the backlog is something probably between 5 and 10, depending on what we think is. And uh, I have one more question about the articles. If, if, uh, if, you write, uh, if you are not a native English speaker or if you are an, arti an article in a language that is not your native language, is uh, this article then proofread and corrected by a native speaker or do you just publish the way you have written? We try to proofread it and edit it before it goes up, absolutely. So we'll help you with it. Hopefully, it's not huge amounts of work, but yeah, we, um, we'll, we'll do that. Cool. What kind of uh, resources do you offer to instructors? Because I imagine that some would be very experienced and have a whole methodological uh, background and so on, and some are just kind of wannabes who mm. are in it for the fun. Yeah, so um, to be honest, we don't offer that many resources right now, but this is something that we're looking into. And um, if you can help us uh, structure, I guess, the... Um, yeah, yeah, you know, like how we can help provide that support for teachers. I know that, you know, uh, when we first made the system, we're just like, wow, with scheduling system, this is perfect, now we're done. And it's like, no, actually, there's a lot of other things that happen, you know, in, in this relationship. And so we do have teachers who are, you know, who have many, many students now, and it's, it's a burden to manage so many students. It's hard. Um, and, you know, when you don't know that they're consistent or they might come back three weeks later as opposed to a couple of days later. So, yeah, there's a lot of tools. There's a lot of, like, ideas about how we can make that, you know, make the teaching experience better for our teachers. Um, we're still a small team. Um, in case you guys don't know, we're based in Shanghai, China. Um, we are a, a officially a Hong Kong company, um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, all of these things we're having. We're trying to build. It's just a matter of prioritization and when we get them out. Um, just a question. I didn't find any feedback system, mm. so that after having had my lesson, I can ask. Uh, I can add a comment yes. about my teacher. Oh, there is. There is. There is. There is. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. No, no, no. Right. It, it's very important for us to um, help the users um, be able to give feedback on the teachers. Cause that's Does that mean that I, I could have written yes. first the comments on this teacher? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. That's how you can know that these teachers are not... I mean, people used to say, you know, like, how do I know that this teacher is any good? And, you know, like, um, you know, we're trying to make a community verified so that, um, you know, you can hear the voices of the other students saying that it's a good lesson or, you know, or so Thank on. You. So. Uh, so I'm one of Idaho uh, Key teachers. And for me, it's been a success story. Uh, so Italki opened many opportunities. I met uh, people who now are my partners. Uh, and I'm interested to either have success other success stories from you or success stories from other teachers in the room. <laughs> if, uh, if there's any other teacher here. As yeah. a teacher, yeah, I'm, I've been te I'm teaching at Aitoki for a year and a half, I think, okay. and I really love it, and I think it's changed my life, I think, <laughs> yes, I was, it was my after I moved to Berlin, and uh, I am teaching Hebrew, by the way, and uh, it was after I, I moved to Berlin, I felt kind of lonely for a year, and I could find no friends, and then I found Aitoki, and all my students are my friends, and I absolutely love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> wow. Hi. So yeah, I teach Swedish. Oh I wow. talking, and I was on a surprise. I started just two months ago, and I was thinking that I maybe have one student, two students, like once a week, twice a week, or something. But I'm currently up to having above ten classes every week. Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> and it's it actually ending up being a lot of work. <laughs> so <laughs> th there is hopefully in a good way. <laughs> yeah, in a good way. I I really enjoy it, but that's c part of my question because I'm thinking about the ratio of uh, how do you say wanting to work italki as a part-time job 
versus mm. just doing it as a hobby. Yeah. What do you have to comment about that? Yeah, so um, it, it's interesting. I think that a, a lot of teachers have different goals when they're on the website, just like students have different goals. Um, you know, we do have uh, teachers who are using this as a main source of income, and uh, that's the minority. And we have a lot of teachers who are using it as, as a supplement for their, um, you know, they're already professional teachers in, you know, in an offline setting. So it's, um, it's a range of outcomes. And I would also say that it's, uh, it's very different on the language. So you noted that, uh, you know, Swedish is kind of like there isn't a huge amount of competition compared to, let's say, you know, Chinese or, or Russian, I have to say. So, um, yeah, so it can really, it can be very different. And as well for um, professional teachers versus tutors. Um, yeah, I mean, we hope that as the system gets better, that we'll be able to, uh, you know, to support just what you need, right? So you won't feel overwhelmed. And uh, at the same time, it's like for teachers who really do want to get more classes out, they'll get um, a better sort of like search ranking in that respect. So, yeah. A question. No, a question. Uh, right now, as we see, as we as we use Italki, we see it as it is right now and um, a developed and functioning site, it's a success at this point. But I would like to learn more about how it started, how you started. It was a kind of an idea of startup, how I talk it evolved. And to, uh, you, with your problems, with, with how many people were there when you started? And oh my how gosh. many people are you right now? Uh, it's interesting. I had a, you know, my co-founder and I, um, he's a Chinese national. I was, uh, I was working on my another startup, actually. And um, we were doing a lot of research into social networking. And when my first startup died, um, I was sharing office space with um, this English teaching company in China, and uh, he was the technology director there. And I was saying that, look, like we've got to try this idea. You know, like it's so important. We've really got to try this. Um, and from there, he got his technology team to work with us to um, to build this very first version. And um, and that's how we just you know we just built it. And we threw it out the door and just saw you know asked if anyone would actually be curious to to try it. Um, and yeah, based on that feedback, we had uh, you know, we had a really positive sort of response, and that's what gave us the. Um, I guess the confidence to try and spin the company out and to, to make ourselves independent. Um, after that point, uh, the story gets very complicated. Um, you know, for a startup, I don't know if any of you have worked in startups or, uh, wow, oh my gosh. So yeah, you guys know, you know how hard it can be, um, you know, when you're really scraping by and there's no money and, uh, you know, everyone, you know, <laughs> some people love what you do and a lot of people hate what you do and, you know, you get a lot of hate mail and, and you're trying to figure out, you know, like, <laughs> what's, the, what's the right thing to, to do, right? Because there's always a million things to try and accomplish. So, um, yeah, you know, we had some, uh, we had good days, we had bad days. Um, you know, we're out there talking with investors like we are now and, um, you know, trying to chart out what the, the next phase of the company will be. I'm just trying to think of what's the best way to, uh, you know, to kind of tell that story. Uh, yes, we were, um, like you say, like working out of my apartment at one point, right? Um, and for too long, um, which is terrible for your social life, I have to totally <laughs> say, never do that. Never run your company out of your apartment. Uh, it's a bad idea. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, and I think that it's only been maybe in the past year and a half or, or two years, I would say, where the company, you know, our, our model is kind of getting ground, right? And, um, you know, the traction's starting to pick up and more people have heard about us. And, uh, you know, I think at the beginning of any two-sided marketplace, you always have this problem where the teachers are like, there's not enough students, there's no point in being here. And then you have a lot of students who are like, I want to learn this, but there's not enough teachers. Um, and that phase is very difficult. And then once you get past that initial traction phase, um, then then suddenly you get what they start having, what they call liquidity. And, um, and that's why I think we're starting the early phases of this. So well, hopefully it'll uh, continue to grow. Um, you have oh. this distinction between community tutors who yes. give informal lessons and teachers who have qualifications. What methods do you have to vet those who call themselves teachers? Because I've seen a few profiles where I wonder, okay, they say they studied this language, but did they also study teaching that language? Or are they just you know, good at it, but maybe not good teachers. What, yeah. um, what procedures do you have for letting somebody into this privileged teacher category? That's a very, it's a good question. It's a tough one. It's, you know, just to give you a sense, when we first put out our teacher and our tutor functions, um, we basically said, hey, everyone can teach, and, you know, it'll just be based on your resume. That's how we'll separate people. And, uh, and there's this huge riot. You know, a lot of the teachers were like, you can't put us in the same category as these people who, have, you know, who are just native speakers. That's terrible, right? And so we, we tried to split that, and that's when we made the designation of professional teachers versus community tutors. Um, so community tutor, yes, we basically try to verify that you're a real human being and that, you know, like that, you know, you're a good person, uh, you're just not necessarily a teacher. Um, you know, for a professional teacher, we do ask for a lot more in terms of verification. We ask that you send us your CV, we ask that you send us your teaching credentials, and, and so on. You know, we try to look at that and at least verify. Um, you know, we're not, mass you know, we don't know every school in the world, and we don't know every, um, 
you know, every language uh, certification. But um, we try our best to at least, you know, do some cursory check throughs on that. And then from there, then we, you know, then we put the teachers out there and make sure that, you know, like, we do occasionally have instances where students will be like, hey, look, this teacher is just not, it's not what he appears to be. And we say, really, and then we investigate. And, you know, of course, I think the teacher has a lot to lose in these, um, in these situations. They're, they're building their own reputation. Um, we often say that we're not a school, right? Um, we say that we're much more like a marketplace or a platform. You know, the teachers are their own schools, and the teachers are able to build their own reputations. So I think that teachers care very much about, you know, what other people, you know, write about them, and, you know, they shouldn't be, I, I think it's to their detriment to, to, to pretend to be something that they're not. So I have a microphone right now. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, uh, thanks for, uh, for having this idea. And then uh, I'm an active user, also thanks to the teachers. When active users actually boosted my Italian a lot, so uh, great. Thank you. Uh, but the one problem that I have uh, is that, yeah, well, you I, I schedule a lesson and then sometimes uh, something comes up mm -hmm. and I, I cannot make it to the lesson and then you have to reschedule and reschedule again and you have to acknowledge this and someone gets paid, yeah. someone's not. And y you have this great feature of, of, um, of, uh, of instant tutoring. Mm -hmm. Like you can, I have a lesson right now. Right. So do you have any plans? like working on this, like somehow promoting this instant tutoring, so I can, if I have half an hour right now, or an hour right now, I would like to have a lesson now. Yeah, so um, two things on that. Uh, I guess on the first part about the scheduling, yeah, like um, our system's a little bit clunky, and we're still trying to work out what's the best way to kind of handle people who cancel their lessons, because you know, we want to be fair to both sides, right? I mean, the students love to be flexible. It's like, oh, you know, you know a friend asked me to go out to the bar, I'm not gonna have my lesson, you know, the, the teacher's waiting there, and they're just like, no way, I blocked out time for this, you know? Um, so we, it's, it's a balance between what's, you know, what's good and what's, uh, what's fair. Um, in terms of the instant lessons, um, I, we were, you know, I was so excited about, like, instant tutoring, this is the future, everyone's just going to be, like, demand right now, like, you know, a lesson. And uh, we put out a very light sort of feature that we have right now, you know, for teachers who are saying, like, well, I'm, I'm available right now, we'll see what happens. Um, it turns out that people don't use it as much as we thought we would. So um, we're a little bit curious. I mean, I'd love to hear if you guys think that it's actually uh, something that you would be really excited about. Because the, the reason why we found that instant tutoring is not as exciting is because people care about who they have that lesson with. I think that's the difference. Instant tutoring is often just whoever is online. But a lot of people were like, no, like I, I've been you know, studying with my teacher over you know, five weeks or something like that. I don't want to just chat with somebody. I want to continue on lesson six you know, and continue forward. So we do have people who use instant tutoring. Um, we would like to make it easier and smoother. Um, but yeah, I guess so far we haven't seen, um, we have seen less demand than we thought we would see for instant tutoring. Um, First of all, I have to say that I'm a really big fan of italki. I've been using it for a long time. Thanks. I was an ex-teacher because I had loads of things going on. I had to cancel my account. But I did have fun as a teacher and a student. Um, however, having said that, like I am a student and my funds are quite limited. Mm -hmm. And as much as I love to pay for all the lessons that I want, I can't do that with my funds at the moment. Like what I'd like to ask is, is there a way for italki to let you earn credits by participating in the website, by contributing to things, for example, for people like me to kind of earn more credits to, to mm. fund my lessons by um, not being a teacher, basically? Right. At the moment, no. Um, but yeah, I would say that the best thing, we do have people who teach and also take classes. So that's definitely, I think, the, the most common model for, for how you can trade that. Um, but for doing um, things in the community and earning credits, it's an idea that we've been we've been toying with. But um, I have to say that it's uh, it's one of these ones that's a little bit scary. Um, at one point, we created this gamification system for points, and uh, and the points don't mean anything, right? Uh, it's just kind of like you have a score of five thousand, and like, yay, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, you know, as soon as we put that up, people were going crazy. People were like, I'm going to ask like six hundred questions, you know. And someone was like, I'm going to like make like ten accounts, and I'm going to like you know answer all those questions and. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, it's, it's, it's very funny actually what happens in the community side. So um, I do think that there's probably something in that, right? If we can somehow curate good answers and, um, you know, and meaningful answers for you know, difficult questions, I think that there's, it's very valuable. Um, it's just hard for us to, to work out a system and, you know, and to know like, what, how to price that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, um, again, I, I think probably the best trade is still uh, teaching someone in, in return for, for the credit so that you can use them elsewhere. I think that uh, maybe apart from me, there are also other people in this room who will be interested in italki teaching. And I will ask, uh, wha which tips do you have uh, for, for, 
for persons who are new to the to this area and uh, do you think that if the person wants to teach also language languages which are not their native how yeah. do you think that uh, new new teachers can uh, find more students and make them pro make their profile more uh, appear in the search field yeah um, it's something that we're we're really thinking about and that's a hard that's a hard question for us because um, we do have a lot of teachers now and um, It does depend on the language, I would say. Um, but in general, um, to, to get more students, I think that just, you know, a lot of common sense things. Uh, make a good profile. Um, you know, explain who you are. Explain, you know, like how you would like to teach. Um, you know, do a good video. Show, uh, you know, show yourself as kind of like a confident person who is, uh, you know, and excited, you know, and, and happy to teach. I think, uh, you know, that's kind of, I think, the profile itself is already very important. Um, depending on the language, um, you know, we are starting to push out newsletters to help to highlight teachers um, with a little bit of experience. Um, and for new teachers, we're hoping to try and come up with some features to help highlight them as well. So um, it's coming. Um, I would say that in terms of, yeah, in terms of tips, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Right now, our search is still based on just when you log in. So um, an important thing, I would say, is to keep yourself active on the website and, um, and just make yourself more visible. Uh, my question probably is not directed to ice hockey, it can be directed to e everyone. Uh, I'm a radio presenter and um, voiceover, and I have a dream of becoming a multilingual, multilingual voiceover. Um, I speak six languages, but when I record in French, it's my, French uh, my French friends, they like it. The English, a bit, is always like, uh, I don't know which language probably I sound better. But my question was, um, if there's anyone who knows if I can find someone who can, I can learn the language with, by someone from the industry, from the field, someone who is a voiceover or a radio presenter. Right. Because um, I can go online and learn, I, I want to learn Russian, by the way, <laughs> and <laughs> Polish. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I would love to... I got a chance to talk to someone who's actually from yes. radio or voice. So maybe it would be a good idea for you or for anyone who's yeah. thinking about creative Absolutely. community. So that's Thank the you. whole thing we were talking about, the enhanced search, that maybe we can somehow match some other criteria about the teachers and, um, and the students. You know, you're interested like a, you know, in, in voiceover and film, and yeah, and maybe there's a teacher who has that type of industry background, and because of that, you're going to choose that teacher as opposed to someone else. You know, someone who's interested in, um, uh, let's say, a uh, sport or something like that, or business or finance, you know, they might have a specific background that might appeal to a specific student. So. Um, These are things that we are working on. Um, just sit tight. <laughs> That's what I would say. Hi, Kevin. Uh, my name's Ollie. I've got two questions for you. Um, first of all, I'd like to have the official line on whether it should be I talky or <laughs> I talk I. Could you clarify? Oh, my please? gosh. Okay, so. Decide now. Decide right now. Okay. Um, the official line is that it's a tomato tomato issue right uh it's uh there is no official one pronunciation uh i think that you can say it however you prefer um what do you say i talk guys right? so uh, so um we did a survey um it sounds that most people speak uh, say i talky um, and that's followed by italki and i talk i is spoken i think it's said by maybe like less than one percent of the people out there <laughs> Which happens to be the way that I started off saying it. So, you know, I've essentially been outvoted by the users, and uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm t I can't break my own habit, and so that's why I think sometimes it comes out and I say I talk I, and then my marketing guys are like, ah, you know, and so, you know, it gets all confusing. But um, as you like. Cool, okay. And my next question is um, more of a bigger scale thing. If there was, like, at, at this stage in the in your for, for, the, for the company, what's the single biggest problem you've got? What would you solve if you had a magic wand that you could wave? Um, um, our mentors and our investors are always asking me this question, and so at different points in time, I have a slightly different answer. Um, since you know, I guess on my side, I, I always I, I'm trying to sympathize with the language learners out there, and so if I could somehow solve this question of guidance for people, I think on a product basis, I think that's something that would be very compelling for people around the world. Um, you know, that, that's something that I think, like, understanding how to solve that problem I, it makes a huge step forward for, I mean, not just us as a business, but I think for education in general. So that's something that, uh, on a personal basis, I really care very much about. 
Um, I would say that on a broader company basis, though, um, there are a lot of internal challenges. Um, for those of you who've run startups, you, you guys all know that um, you know, everyone is complaining about X feature or, you know, or what have you, or you know, marketing. Or, but you know, a lot of the challenges are internal. And um, just you know, can, do you guys have the capacity, to, you know, the management skills, and the, the ability to grow your team and to um, you know, keep everyone running in the right direction? So um, yeah, I think that actually you know, we have a lot of also internal things that we're working on. Um, to try and become the company that we, you know, that we think can actually um, scale and take on, you know, hopefully bring this type of language learning to the world. Okay, so the last Norwegian lesson I took was about four months ago, um, preparing for a trip to Norway, and I haven't done it in the meantime. I was just thinking, there's, I've got no way that I made myself or that the site provides to review any of the vocabulary or topics covered. Um, I was just wondering, rather than, because like, after the lesson, the teacher confirms back with you and says. Oh, Michael did da, 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 we learned da, 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 it, w it went well, it didn't go well. Um, right. I was wondering, is there some way you could uh, maybe not force, maybe encourage teachers to um, store some information that's helpful to you, like uh, more long term? So, like, if you had to say vocab lists or like yeah. pronunciations or sentence structures. Absolutely. Or like oh my gosh, uh, this is like a feature that's killed me for a long time. I've, uh, you know, we internally we call that student notes and teacher notes. And, um, and we have specs, we have ideas for how to do this, and we just haven't executed it yet. Um, I, I have, for my lessons, I have tons of Skype conversations I've copied out. I have like Word files and text files, and they're all just hanging out on my hard disk. And I'm sure my teacher, I've had a couple of great Japanese teachers who you know, sent me like typed up notes of the things that we've done. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a shame we have not captured that information. It's like your own personalized textbook, as I mentioned earlier. And so at the moment, no, we're not doing it. Uh, but that's something that we definitely want to do. So um, again, it's one of these things about being in a startup. You know, everyone is like, ah, you know, and you're just, you, have to, you have to choose what you think is the most important. It's coming. Um, it's coming. So uh, that's all I can say right now. <laughs> uh, I know you say you want to be a marketplace, but do you not see that there would be an advantage if you did have a set curriculum and that you could gain some form of consistency from you as a, a website or from your perspective anyhow? Yeah, I think the thing about having a, a set curriculum and telling teachers how to teach, I think we're just a little bit worried that that's, you know, like we're not language experts. You guys are much more language experts than we are experts. I, we don't know if that's uh, it's good for everybody in the system. But, um, but I think the idea that you're looking at is um, maybe having something like, um, like, like a generic or something that's like open for teachers to potentially use um, if they want to or the students can potentially use as a, poten you know, as a, as a rough structure. Um, what we don't want to have happen is, is to become, again, like a sort of cookie cutter type of place. It's like you are on italki level two, and now what you must do is learn you know, the infinitive. Or and so we don't want to tell teachers how to teach. Uh, we don't want to make it inflexible. Um, I do think that, yeah, but I do think that there is a role for having um, some sort of standardized, you know, some, some materials on the side that if you don't know where to start, right, rather than basically saying, like, who is your language counselor? Google, you know, like, and, and sending people out there to try and, you know, scavenge for whatever materials they can find. So I think there is a balance. And, um, and yeah, we do, we would love to have those materials. Uh, we just don't have them ourselves yet. So, um, yeah, we we're leaving it to the teachers at the moment, and we would love to get something up. The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language.